Hey guys, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I'm going to share how I made these DIY felt and leather pennants. I made these two different ways, so whether or not you have a Cricut, you can totally make this DIY. For this project, you will need some stiff felt. This is some felt that I had left over from an older project that I have been saving for years with this project in mind. I got it from the fabric store, and so you can buy it by the meter or by the section. You'll also need some leather. The leather that I have is from an old couch that I found for free on Kijiji and then I skinned it so I could have leather for craft projects. You'll also need a hot glue gun, a cutting mat, and either a rotary cutter or great fabric scissors. Before I get into making the pennants, this is one of the designs that I hand lettered on my iPad and then cut out using my Cricut. I am just weeding this out of iron-on material. I just wanted to get this done and out of the way so that it would be an easy win when I was done hand painting the other pennant. If you are interested in learning how to use your hand lettering for a cutout on the Cricut, I will link another video below where I show how you can use any image, including your hand lettered images from an iPad or cut with Cricut. And that design has my hand lettering for the name Pasteur. And then I used the Varsity font that comes in Cricut Design Space for the word team. So now that that's weeded and set aside, I am cutting it. Now you can see that I struggled so much with this rotary cutter. It's so frustrating. And you'll see before the second one, I switched to a different rotary cutter that was clearly much sharper and it cut like butter. So sharp scissors and cutting tools for the win. So I cut mine six inches high and I didn't bother squaring it up. I just went off the one edge. So you can see that it's not a perfectly square or rectangular piece of fabric and that's okay. I just folded my one edge straight and then I'm cutting on an angle from the top corner down, just making sure to make room for that iron on design. I also left about an inch before I started on the angle and this is where the leather strip is going to be on the pennant. So I used my rotary cutter to cut it just like that. And you can see how much I'm struggling here. Oh my gosh, this was so frustrating. <laughs> so I ended up finishing cutting it with my fabric scissors and that went really well. I also rounded off the corner of the pennants, the triangles there just to make it a little bit softer. Okay, so here's where I switch to the other rotary cutter and you can see how much better it works. It just cuts like butter. I use the same rotary cutter and ruler to cut my leather as well. You can also buy leather scraps at the craft store in a bag and you really only need scraps for this project. So I cut my strips of leather about one inch wide and then they're six inches long, just the same as my pennant. And then I also cut about quarter inch strips to use as decorative ties on the pennants. And I cut those into about three inch strips each and I needed four for each pennant. After they were all cut, I used my hot glue gun to attach the leather to the felt. So you'll see on the first one, I added glue down the whole side and then tried to stick it on and had to make quite a few adjustments after the fact because the glue dried too quickly. So on the second one here, you can see that I just glued the top half, stuck those ties in, and then glued the second half afterwards, and that worked much better. Okay, so the first method that I wanna show you here is with paint. So typically when I'm writing on felt, I prefer to use one of these fine tip applicators that you can just screw right onto the craft size bottles of paint, but the paint that I wanted to use had such a tiny screw top that I couldn't use it. So I tried squeezing it right on and you'll see that that didn't work. So I used a paintbrush. But before I get to painting, I used my cultures pencil to draw my design onto the felt. I was copying the designs that I had hand lettered and drafted on my iPad here. So the paintbrush that I'm using for this is an old flat paintbrush that I had actually cut the bristles down. So the bristles are super short. And I did this specifically to letter and paint on fabric, coarser fabrics like felt or like drop cloths because the short 
kind of stiffer bristles make it a lot easier to get into those nooks and crannies and for your brush to not fray because fabric like this is so rough it'll fray your brush and you'll end up with messy looking strokes so that's why I cut it down it works really good the paint that I'm using here is a matte fabric paint it is from Tulip brand and it works really great it's washable and wonderful on t-shirts and things but considering this will never be washed I probably could have used any acrylic paint. So if you are going to be doing this by hand, no, it's going to take you a really long time. I have sped this up a lot and it probably could use a second coat. I think it looks really great like this with just one coat, but if I wanted it to be a nice bright white, especially when you look at it next to the iron on version, it probably could use a second coat. Try not to drag the paintbrush too much because that will pick up fibers from the felt and make it look a little bit more rough and frayed. If you are having trouble filling in the spaces, just use more paint and kind of dab it in instead of trying to work it in by dragging your paintbrush back and forth. Okay, so I set that one aside to dry it and I worked on my second one. So this one is just regular iron-on vinyl that I got from Cricut and I have weeded my design, which just means taking away all of the parts that I don't want to iron on. And I've heated up my Easy Press, which is basically a big iron that you can set the time and the temperature on to the specified temperature for iron-on material on felt. So I am just ironing it on and then peeling the backing off. So I needed to iron it on for 30 seconds and you are supposed to wait for it to cool before you peel it back, but I was impatient. So here I am flapping it around, trying to get it to cool faster because I wanted it to be done. I was so excited. So when that is done, that's it. So you can see this version is way faster and you get kind of more of a professional look. But if you don't have a Cricut, the hand painted method is really beautiful as well. And this is what I did for years before I got a Cricut and an iPad for my lettering. If you have a Cricut and don't have an iPad for your lettering, you can also digitize your scanned in artwork and I will link a blog post below on how to do that. So that is all there is to it. I really love how these pennants turned out and now I just have to decide where they're going to go. I'd love to hear which one is your favorite and if you would make one, what you would put on yours. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos.